What's good, y'all? your boy Ross. Back at it again with another video. So I'm going to check out 10 WWE title reigns you totally forgot happened. This should be a very interesting one by WrestleMania. Subscribe to WrestleMania if you haven't already. Link to the original video will be down below in the description as always. Um, I'm looking forward to this. To, you know, kind of go back down memory lane on certain title reigns that I forgot was even a thing. So this should be a very interesting one. Appreciate our love and support. We're going to get right into this one, man. Throughout WWE's existence, there have been some incredibly memorable title reigns that are fondly remembered. Yeah. However, WWE are also prone to giving a wrestler a rather unmemorable title reign. And when an image of that specific wrestler is seen with the title in question, fans are left baffled and collectively yeah. wonder when on earth that reign actually took place. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE title reigns you had no idea happened. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 10, Chris Jericho, the Hardcore Championship. Chris Jericho oh. has won virtually every major championship imaginable, and for the most part, his reigns, specifically in WWE, have been rather memorable. However, whenever an image on social media is seen that features That's Jericho crazy. with a hardcore title, fans are left a little confused. The majority of WWE fans had no idea that Y2J is a former hardcore champion. I and forgot. The likely reason for this is I don't because even remember that was so incredibly brief. Jericho won the hardcore title on May 28th, 2001's edition of Raw by defeating his future tag team partner, The Big Show. His reign would just last a matter of seconds as Rhino would proceed to gorge Jericho oh, on the wow. Damn. Jericho's first and only reign as hardcore champion. Oh. Number 9, Albert. Well, there we go. That's that's why I don't remember that. <laughs> it was it was it was over before it even started. Intercontinental title. Matt Bloom delivered a number of gimmicks throughout his career, but he had his most successful run as Albert in 2001. WWE made the bold decision to have Albert dethrone Kane and for Albert to become Intercontinental Champion. This yeah. reign is rarely discussed and it was crazy to think that with all the talent WWE had on their roster in 2001, they gave the win to Albert. I do Whilst remember Albert that. Albert was decent in the ring, he wasn't getting the crowd response that warranted a title win of this magnitude. Albert's reign would last just a few weeks before WWE booked him to drop the title to Lance Storm. Yeah, Albert I do winning remember a title could have worked, that's if he was built up to be a menacing legitimate threat. But the issue was that Albert lacked any ounce of credibility and hadn't won any major matches before he defeated Those the big red are machine. Wild. <laughs> Number 8, Kalisto, multiple time US champion. While somewhat popular, Kalisto never broke out to the mid-card scene in WWE. But one shocking fact about Kalisto's WWE career is that he won the US title on two separate occasions. He I think won I the do title vaguely twice remember in this as well. And both times he defeated Alberto Del Rio. It's unclear why these two reigns are never discussed. Bro, but I love that move. That's Solito Del... Uh, I think it's called... Pronounced Solito Del Sol. Let me Google this, bro. I gotta make sure this is right. I don't want to botch this up. So his finisher is pronounced Salida del Sol. Okay, I just wanted to make sure because I didn't want to botch it up, but I do love that move. I, I it's just it's a, a it's a very fluid, beautiful move. I love anytime he ever hit it, I loved it. So it's worth noting that the credibility of the US title was at a bit of a low point in 2016. John Cena's US title reign in 2015 made the US title a worthy title. But yeah. when Alberto Del Rio became champion, unfortunately, everything went downhill relatively quickly. Uh, yep. Number seven, Mark Henry, European champion. When fans often discuss I think Mark I vaguely Henry's remember this too. WWE, Shout out to Mark Henry, man. Reference Henry's critically acclaimed world title reign from 2011. The one reign from Henry's career that is never discussed is when he became a European champion. Yeah, I've been, the yeah we've seen this the video is a title talking about that. that. Legends such as Triple H, Owen Hart, and Shawn Michaels have held, but it's almost as if Henry's reign was so incredibly lifeless that fans have erased it from their memory. In a unique booking move, Henry didn't win the European title. Instead, he was simply awarded it by uh -huh. Jeff Jarrett for helping Jarrett defeat D'Lo Brown. This instantly sent Henry's reign off the rails, as simply giving a wrestler a title brings the credibility and legitimacy of the title into question. Yeah. Henry's reign was a total dud, and by the next pay-per-view, he would drop it to D'Lo Brown, bringing an end to one of the most uninspired title reigns of the entire Attitude Era. Yeah. Number 6, R-Truth, the Hardcore Championship. 
R-Truth is still very much an active member of the WWE roster, and it's crazy to think that Truth was in WWE during the Attitude Era, yeah. whilst Truth reigned as Kate Quick during the Attitude Era. Doesn't look like he's aged. Special. He did win a title during this era, and the title in question would be the Hardcore title. Truth won the infamous title on two separate occasions, and both times occurred at live events. This in all likelihood is the reason why fans question if Truth uh... even won a title during the respective era, as footage of the two wins is hard to come by in WWE. Oh uh, yeah, if it was at house events, and back then, most people didn't really have cameras to even record like that, so... Damn, it's one of those type of situations. Didn't even release any official photos of him with the title. Truth would actually discuss the hardcore title wins during an interview with Ryan Satin, and the WWE veteran even admitted that he doesn't remember who he defeated to win the title. Damn. The hardcore title was so quick and abrupt. I don't even remember who I beat. I think Raven beat me for it. Coming from me, the hardcore championship ain't got shiznit on the 24-7 <laughs> championship. That title had an article by Forbes magazine. Google that. That championship was doing 20 million views per week. I don't yeah. remember the hardcore championship doing none of that. Bro, because R-Truth made that championship entertaining. Because anything that R-Truth does is entertaining. I love his interaction with the Judgment Day as of late. He's entertaining. He is the only reason why anyone even cared about the 24-7 championship. Because R-Truth is that entertaining. Our truth is just amazing, even in just interviews. Number 5. The Undertaker Hardcore Championship The Undertaker is one of the greatest names to ever lace up a pair of boots, yet his reign sure. in 2001 as Hardcore Champion seems to have been erased from the history books. The dead man defeated Rob Van Dam to win the Hardcore title at the Vengeance pay-per-view, and the visual of The Undertaker with the Hardcore title is somewhat humorous. Unlike most Hardcore title reigns that lasted mere minutes, The Dead Man's reign lasted 58 days which Jeez. brought a great spotlight to the title and it made for some incredibly memorable moments. Even though The Undertaker's reign was entertaining, there must be a logical reason why fans and WWE yeah. often alienate this part of The Undertaker's career. It's likely that due to the dead man having such an iconic career, the hardcore I forgot title about that just too. had to be naturally forgotten about in favor of the Hall of Fame's other accomplishments. I, I really forgot that he had that. <laughs> I'm being so dead serious. I don't even remember that, that, that phase of him being a hardcore champion. Number 4. Christian as European Champion Fans were baffled in late 2001 when Christian suddenly appeared on TV as European Champion. This I don't even fans remember. Nobody had witnessed Christian winning the European title. The last thing fans remembered was Bradshaw being European Champion. Well, the story goes that Christian defeated Bradshaw to win the title on SmackDown, but due to time constraints, the match was cut from the broadcast. Oh, this decision to cut wow. the match spoke volumes in relation to how WWE perceived the, the European title during yeah. this time. The European title was an afterthought, and they didn't even air footage of the title win on Raw the next week. This lack of care is likely why fans forgot this reign even happened. But unlike the other reigns on this list, it's obvious that it doesn't help that footage of the actual title change has never been made available to watch. Yeah. Number 3. Randy Orton US Champion. This I definitely forgot Randy too. Randy Orton has solidified himself as an all-time great, but one of Orton's title reigns has seemingly been lost in the minds of fans and, by extension, WWE themselves. In 2018, Orton became US Champion for the first and only time. Mm -hmm. Orton faced off against Bobby Roode at the Fastlane event, and Orton won the match and the title. Orton winning a mid-card title should have led to a run similar to that of John Cena in 2015, but, it did not. It didn't. but WWE had other ideas. This reign was a complete waste of time, which was a massive yeah. shame, as the reign had so much potential. Number two. Yeah, if you don't actually mention it, <laughs> most people would be like, wait, Randy Orton was the United States Champion? When did that happen? I mean, we all, you know, know, you know, of him being the Intercontinental Champion or whatnot, but, and obviously his multiple world championships and tag team championship gold, but most people don't really think Randy Orton and United States Championship reign at all, so. Jinder Mahal, U.S. Championship. Speaking of Randy Orton's U.S. title reign, the individual he dropped the title to somehow managed to have a reign that was even more forgettable. Orton yeah. dropped the title to Jinder Mahal in a fatal four-way at WrestleMania 34. The match also featured Bobby Roode and Rusev, and going into the match, fans expected Rusev to get the yeah. W, as this was during the peak of the Rusev Day storyline. Mahal's reign lasted just eight days before he lost the title to Jeff Hardy, making it one of the most pointless and unmemorable pointless, title reigns in company history. Of course. We remember his WWE title reign because that shouldn't have happened. This shouldn't have happened. But hey, I don't know. It's just they just said, you know what? 
We're going to do the exact opposite of what people want and give Jinder Mahal title runs that he does. It doesn't make sense for him to have. So, you know. History. WWE clearly had no long-term plans for the once prestigious title, and this disappointing booking is no doubt a key factor in there being so many forgotten reigns. And number one, Cody Rhodes and Drew McIntyre, WWE Tag Team Champions. Throughout WWE history, mm. there have been some tag teams that flew under the radar. This was particularly the case in 2010s when WWE had a habit of throwing two talents together in hoping of creating magic. This occurred when WWE decided to pair up two of the brightest young stars in the company, those being Rhodes and Drew McIntyre. What? The two would win the tag team titles at the Night of Champions pay-per-view wow. in 2010, and on paper, the team had a ton of potential. Sadly, the next month at the Bragging Rights pay-per-view, the duo would drop the titles to the unusual team consisting of John Cena and David Otunga, and this would spark the end of their run as a tag team combination. I don't Fast remember this. To over a decade after their run as a tag team, and the two are cemented as main eventers in WWE. If the two ever have a featured feud on TV, yeah. WWE may look to mention their prior history as tag team champions. They should. The problem with mentioning their established history is that a strong portion of the casual fan base had no idea that they even had a run as tag team champions. Yeah. So they may opt to pretend like the 35 day reign never even happened. But they have it for 10 WWE titles. I see that why that was number one. I see that why that was number one. Oh, I did not know that. I don't even remember that. That's crazy. I did not know they were tag team champs, man. That is crazy. They could definitely build some type of story off that if they ever choose to feud. Because right now, Drew is putting in some pretty good character work. I like what they've been doing with his heel turn and him going more rogue week by week. So that could be very interesting if that's something that they choose to do. And Drew definitely could have some issues with... uh with cody considering cody is the reason why jay is even back in wwe and he's the reason why jay uso is on monday night raw so if they choose to bring that up i'm all for it man i, I forgot <laughs> comment down below let me know some other wwe title reigns you just don't remember being a thing it, but it actually happened you just don't remember the, that person that said wrestler holding that championship because it was just that forgettable for you <laughs> let me know down below if it wasn't on this list already but i appreciate all the love and support guys just showing on channel road to 150k and i'm still the youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all kicking with me see you on next one peace